Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Pray First, a conversation we have Monday through Friday right here on the Pastor Doug page. It's so good to be with you guys on this Thursday, July the 22nd at 7 o'clock. We come here Monday through Friday and have this conversation, but most of us realize that Pray First is more than a conversation. It is a principle that we give God the first. The first of our day, the first of our week, the first of our month, the first of our year, the first of our time, the first of everything we give to God. And one of the ways that we practice this is before we roll out of bed, before we talk to our spouse, our child, before we watch the news for sure, before we check our messages, our social media, before we check our email, we always talk to the Lord and have Him set the agenda of our day. So hit the hearts, hit the lights, go crazy on those, and let all of our first-time guests know that we are so glad that they are here. <clears throat> Good morning, Donna. Good morning, pa hey, Donna. Donna. <clears throat> Hi, Neil. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Jason. Good morning, good morning. We're going back into Revelation chapter 4, but we're going to expand on that. Remember, we're not talking as much right now about the symbolism of the four living creatures and the, uh, the seven lampstands. Right now, we're talking more about the application of as important, or maybe more so, than you understanding the symbolism and the definitions of the things of Revelation is that how does it affect your life? Not in the future, not in the end times. Uh, the book of Revelation is not a revelation about the end times. The book of Revelation is a book about and revelation about Jesus Christ. Hi, Chip Myers. Get those red faces off my page. <laughs> Hi, Renee. Good morning, everybody. All right, so let's go ahead and get back to Revelation chapter 4. I want you to turn that frowny face into a smiley face, Chip Myers. What's up, Phil Smith? Good morning. Good morning, my, my Smith family. Hi, Pamela Levins. Good morning, guys. Good morning, Barbie. Revelation chapter 4. Now, remember, in the book of Revelation, in the book of Ezekiel, in the book of Exodus, all these areas throughout Scripture... At Mount Sinai, God says, come up here. Jesus says, come up here. The four living creatures surrounding the throne of God in heaven is, is crying out, come up here. Come up here where I am. He's inviting us to do that. So on yesterday, we talked about um, the highest position. And we talked about the ox. We're going to continue talking about the ox today. But in the ox, we find the cornerstone, if you will, of the foundation of the church and your life, which is serving. Everybody hashtag serving. Hashtag serving. Remember, there's four corners. There's four, cre four living creatures that has four faces on each of those four corners. There is a eagle. There's an eagle. There is a lion. There is the ox and there's the face of a man and all four represent something that is so important in the foundation of the church and in our personal lives. The ox representing servitude, serving, helping, serving others, loving others. And we talked about the highest position yesterday. Today, we're going to talk about number two. So if you missed yesterday, go back on yesterday. Hashtag number two. Today we're talking about the highest place. <clears throat> the highest place. I want you to recognize something about yesterday and today. I want you to recognize what's going on in the world around us. I want you to recognize how the enemy is attacking in, in, in ways that are so brazen, apparent, uh, not even trying to be hidden, but just in your face. I want you to recognize that there is a drought. There is a drought uh, both physically and spiritually in our nation. You wouldn't know that in the Mid-South as much rain we have, but our, our nation is much bigger than the Mid-South, and 
You all need to hear what I'm about to say. We're all connected. Just because you're not experiencing something in your bubble, and just because you're not experiencing something in your community, and just because you think you're beyond the state line of a major city or another area, we're all connected. That state line and that bubble that, that, that you and I may live in from time to time, where the things that are going on in the world are not going on in our bubble, that's, that's, like, that's like the monster under the bed sheet theory. You know, as long as you have a sheet over you, the monster on the bed can't get you, so you won't put your leg out, you keep your leg under the sheet. We have a responsibility. Those of us who have been served, those of us who have been helped, those of us who have been blessed, those of us who have been served, helped, blessed by someone or some organization or the church or whoever we've been blessed, helped, or served by, we have a responsibility to bless to serve, and to help. I'm telling you right now, it's very important that you are listening to the messages on the weekend that Jesus did not call us Christians. He called us disciples. He didn't just call us disciples. He defined disciple. He defined disciple as salt, a preservative. And that if that preservative does not preserve, culture rots. Culture stinks. Culture falls apart. And then if you think it's bad now in our society, in our community, in our world, then you, the salt, give up. And you, the salt, stop preserving. And you, the salt, stop leveraging whatever influence you have. You, the salt, withdraw. You, with, you, you the salt, say it's hopeless. If you think it's bad now, you cannot imagine what our world will be like if the preservative gives up. He didn't just call us salt, he called us light. I'm telling you that one of the great delusions of darkness is that the darkness can't hurt you or you know, the darkness doesn't affect you. The darkness affects everyone. It, it, it's not just that little things seem more scary in the dark. You know, Kermit the Frog says good things happen in the dark to try to alleviate the fears of children. But it's also that you are disoriented in the dark. You lose your ability to balance in the dark. And I'm telling you, if you look at our society, the ability to balance is far off balance in the dark. You, you lose your ability to navigate when there's no light. And we have lost our ability to navigate. Therefore, our leaders have lost the ability to lead because they are all blind, leading blind people. So yesterday we talked about the ox. We talked about the highest calling. We talked about the highest position which is a servant. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about the highest place. That we, the followers of Christ, have got to take the highest place and we've got to do it with humility. We've got to take the high ground and we've got to do it with humility. We've got to take back the things that the devil has stolen and we've got to do it with humility. We've got to take back the family. And we have to do it with humility. We've got to take back our schools, our churches, our governments. We have to take back the land. We have to take back the, the area. We have got to take back that which has been stolen. And it must be done in humility. It, it's not going to be done in the ways that we may think. It should be done. It's not going to be done loudly. It's not going to be done by force. It's going to be done by the power of the Holy Spirit. So today, number two, number two, yesterday we talked about the highest position. Number two, today we're going to talk about the highest place. Luke chapter 11, 
verse 33. Jesus says that there is a world that's living in the dark. Jesus says there is a world that's looking up to blind leaders who are leading blind people. Jesus says that there are people who are afraid. They can't see their way out of their circumstances. They can't see their way through. They're living in chaos, fear, discouragement, hopelessness. Jesus says there are a lot of people living in the dark. We know that Jesus also says that there are 50% of the church who have lamps, but there's no oil. And how many of you know that a lamp without oil doesn't produce light? They just have lamps. They look like a lamp. They look like a light, but they're not a light. They don't have the power of the Holy Spirit, the oil inside them to be a light. But that 50% of the church, 50% of the virgins, have that oil in their lamp. In recognizing that and the circumstances and the situation of the world right now, and recognizing that God has given you a dream, and that God has given you a destiny, and while that dream excites you to go and do something big, and do something bold, and do something courageous, and be somebody, the destiny's never about you. The destiny's never about me. Our destiny, like Joseph's example, and the reason it's inclusion in Scripture is that our destiny is always about helping people who are wandering in the dark, whose culture is rotting around them, who's living life backwards and in confusion. And Jesus says, you're my disciple. My Holy Spirit working through you is the hope of the world. You're the salt. You're the preservative. And without you, society rots. You're the light. And let me tell you what God is saying to his church and what God is saying to you and I specifically. Quit, quit thinking so much about the everybody and think about the us. You know, we're part of the church. You and I, we are the church. Luke chapter 11, verse 3. No one, Jesus says, when he has lit a lamp, puts it in a secret place. <laughs> no one. Jesus says, how foolish would it be for you to light a lamp and hide it in a closet? How foolish would it be for you to light a lamp with the intention of illuminating a space or illuminating a room or helping people to not be afraid? Helping people to see between here and there. Helping people find direction. How foolish would it be to lead people? with the light that's been lit. But you keep it hidden. You keep it away. You, you cover it up. Jesus says no one does that in Luke eleven thirty three. 33. No one lights that lamp and, and puts it in a secret place or, or puts it under a basket. In other words, salt and light shouldn't be God's best kept secret. Disciples should not be God's best kept secret. Disciples aren't kept in back rooms and under tables. Disciples aren't kept under baskets. No one, no one does that, Jesus says. No one, when he is lit a lamp, puts it in a secret place or under a basket. Let's talk about this. I want you to think about who lit your lamp. You say, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hide myself or I'm going to put myself on a lampstand. No, you didn't light yourself. The lighter of the lamp is the Holy Spirit. The lighter of the lamp is God. The lighter of the lamp is Jesus. The, he has lit something inside of us. He has brought that which was dead to life. He has spoken to your spirit and said, Lazarus, come forth. You can't be hidden in that grave anymore. You can't be hidden wrapped in those grave clothes anymore. We're not going to keep you a secret, Lazarus, and go tell everybody that you're alive. Go walk amongst them and let those who saw your funeral know you're in fact alive. And you didn't light yourself. You didn't reignite your life. You didn't reignite your lung. You didn't readjust your heart. You didn't cause the synapses of your brain to fire. God our Father said, Lazarus, come forth to you. 
I'm not putting you back in the cave. I'm not wrapping you back up in the clothes. I'm going to set you on a lampstand because no one lights a lamp and hides it. No one, when he has lit a lamp, Jesus says, put it in a secret place or under a basket to be hidden. But it is placed on a lampstand. It's placed on a lampstand. Jesus lights our lamp and places us on a lampstand. He puts us in places of influence. He puts us in dark rooms to shine light. He puts us in dark rooms to shine light, not because the room is dark, but because his children are afraid. Because his kids are afraid. It's not because the room is dark. It's because he has a Jarvis in the room. It's because he has a Paxton in the room. It's because he has a Dalton in the room. It's because he has a Natalie in the room. It's because he has his, those, his children are in the room and he's lit lamps and they're being hidden. He's lit lamps and they find themselves in closets. No one does that. The Holy Spirit's lit our lamps so that we can provide light. Guys, we live in a place that's so dark. It's going to get darker. We live in a place that is rotting. It's stinking. It's decaying. It's falling apart. God wants to put you on the highest place. He wants to put you in the room where you can make a difference. He wants to give you opportunities and place you in front of people. God wants to use you to extend life, an invitation to change. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3, the highest place. So what's the highest place? Should, should I be clawing and clamoring and climbing my way to the highest place? Should I be stepping on people? Should I do whatever it takes? Should I use you? Should I use them? Should I use somebody to get where I need to be? No, God lights the lamp. God puts you in the place. Humility is the direction up. Humility is the direction to influence. Humility is, I, my mom, if she taught me or attempted to teach me, if she said something to me more than a thousand times, every time she talked to me about my future, my life, calling, whatever, She'd say, Doug, <clears throat> stay humble. Stay humble. Whatever you do is not about you. If you need to be strong, be strong for them. If you need to say something, say something for them. If you need to stand up, stand up for them. There's going to be a lot of them. Doug, people have helped you, Doug. Our church has helped you, Doug. Larry Wilkinson has helped you, Doug. Ken Bradley has helped you, Doug. Carrie Chapel, Cornerstone, uh, Restoration. These churches has helped you. These people have invested in you. Charlie Patricia Shaw has invested in you. These people have invested in you. Rodney and Tammy has, have invested in you. Listen to me, Doug. Those of you who have been helped, those of you who have been served, those of you who have been blessed, recognize your responsibility to help, to serve, and to bless others. <clears throat> Philippians 2, <clears throat> verse 3, Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness. The ox is the symbol of lowliness as well. But in lowliness of mind, in lowliness of mind, in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem others better than himself or more highly than himself is another way it's written in other translations, more highly than himself. It's not that people are more valuable than you. No one's more valuable than you. No one's less valuable than you. But we are to treat them as if they are. We are to treat others as if they are more valuable let each of you, verse 4, let each of you look out not only for your own interests, but also for the interests of others. 
And then Paul goes on here in Philippians in verse 5 through 8 and tells us this is what Jesus did. And remember, Jesus tells us to love how? To love like he's loved us. Verse 9, therefore, since that is true, since Jesus did that, and that's how Jesus loved people. Jesus loved people with grace and truth. Jesus treated other people more valuable than himself. Jesus looked out for the interest of others and not just his interests alone. Therefore, verse 9, since all that is true, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. What does that mean? The Holy Spirit didn't light the lamp in Jesus and say, Jesus, come forth out of the tomb to put him back in the tomb or to hide him or to, you know, cover him up. He was brought out of the tomb so that God would exalt him and put him in a place where he can shine light for everyone in the room. And, and that's, that's you and I as well. Job chapter 5, verse 11 he, God, sets on high those who are lowly, and those who mourn are lifted to safety. Whew, I love that verse. And those who mourn are lifted to safety. Luke chapter 1, verse 52. He, God, has put down the mighty from their thrones, and he, God, has exalted the lowly. Matthew chapter 23, verse 12. Can I tell you something about lamps and lights? They don't sit around describing the darkness. Lamps and lights don't sit around and bitch and moan about the circumstances around them. Lamps and lights don't sit around describing, bitching. Lamps and lights don't sit around and commentate on the darkness around them. Lamps and lights dispense and dispel the darkness around them. So different than oilless lamps that have the potential to bear light, that understand light, that can define light, knows what light is, but no oil. First Peter chapter 5, verse 6, Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that in time he may exalt you, and let me tell you how you know it's still all about you and you're not humble yet and you haven't passed the pride test, which is the first test of the 10 tests of destiny. You haven't passed the pride test when you say these words. I don't want to be exalted. I don't want to be elevated. I don't want to be in a position of that nature. I want to be humble. It never was about you. Why would you not want to be in a position like that? Why would you not want to be exalted? Why would you not want to be elevated? Because it's still all about you. But I'm telling you this right now. If the exaltation of you helps save your children, you do it. If the exaltation or the placement of you helped change somebody's direction, wouldn't you do it? If, if God gave you a place of influence where you could help thousands of people, wouldn't you do it? If God exalted you so that you could be salt or so that you could be light, wouldn't you do it? Guys, let me tell you something about being lifted up, exalted. <clears throat> the Son of Man was lifted up. It may not look like what you think it's going to look like to be exalted or lifted up. It may be an ignorance that you think it's some place of glamour and I don't know. But it could very well be that you're lifted up on a cross. Exalted. Shown. Put in a dark room to shine light. I don't know if I read 1 Peter 5 or 6. I did, but I'm going to read it again. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Here's what I want... I have an opportunity today for Destiny Center uh, to be in a room and talk to an organization that is changing the country. Um, it's big. I don't even want to talk about how big it is, so I'm not. But I, I don't know how I got in that room. But I was invited in that room, so I'm going to be in there day at 11.45, so pray for me. And the 
the weight I feel is not nervousness to talk to people who, you know, seem so way up here. And the weight I feel like I'm carrying in that room is uh, of grandmothers and uh, single moms and dads and families who are struggling uh, because there may be something I can say in that room that is going to help a lot of people, <laughs> like a lot of people, like people all over our country kind of help people. And uh, I just keep hearing my mom. Wherever you go today and whatever you do and whatever room you find yourself in, there's going to be a need for a lamp and there's going to be a need for salt. So I'm asking you, am I, I'm asking you uh, to, to worship God, to get on your face, to humble yourself. It may take a while to humble your personality, <laughs> but, uh, and you have to pray. You have to ask God to help because I can tell when I'm strutting and I can tell when I'm feeling, you know, big britches and I can tell when I'm feeling that. And I have those moments. I do have those moments and it feels yucky. So, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, for every person listening and every person watching, um, and, and whatever year they're listening or watching this in, this is not time-sensitive material. It is for such a time as whoever's hearing it. You've got something to offer, and God doesn't want to hide you anymore. He doesn't want to keep you under a bushel. He doesn't want to put you in a closet. He's placed you. He's placed you where you are to preserve a rotting world because his kids are there. He's placed you in the room to provide light because his kids are there. And it may stink and it may be confusing and it may seem chaotic and it may seem fearful, but God's got a plan there for you. Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, no spirit but you have your way. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. I want to say something to what Brandy just said about stop thinking you have nothing to offer. You don't light your own lamp. You don't power change. You have nothing to do with it. You're a lamp. God lights you. God provides the light. The sun didn't shine. Oh, the sun has light. The sun has power. The sun has energy. The sun has heat. The sun has nothing. Lest God said, let there be light. It's just a rock. So yeah, quit, quit worrying about what you can't do and can do. Both of those are pride. But God's got something special for you. Boy, does he. And it's going to affect a lot of people.